Those old pens and pencils you've been throwing into a drawer in the kitchen or in the den somewhere or in a desk could actually be worth a lot of money. There are many pens and pencils, just common everyday ones, that can sell for a lot of money. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some pens and pencils. We're going to talk about them, the value in them. Those old common ones do carry some value as well. We're going to show you some that made us some pretty darn good money for very little cost invested into them. We're going to show you, though, some that you can actually find and that you may have right now that could be sold for some darn good profit. So I know most people think about fountain pens as the most valuable, and they actually are the most valuable in general. But to be honest with you, I almost never find any high dollar uh, fountain pen of any kind out in the wild. And I go to a lot of places. I've got people that pick up for us and they just don't turn up very often at all. And that's why they're worth so much money. In 25 years of doing this, I found one pen, one fountain pen that was worth almost a thousand. We found several that were worth three to five and a bunch that were worth, say, 150 to 75 buck range bunch of cheaper ones obviously that we would sell in lots that's usually what your odds are going to be of finding these they're they're extremely slim many of these may be expensive ones that were being sold by the actual original owner there's a whole market for fountain pens high-end collectors swap out and sell and all sorts of different things and you're going to see tons of them selling some of them are made of gold and silver, precious metals, like the nibs on some of them. Something you will find. We found gold nibs before. I'm sure others have as well. Many people miss them. They just go by the pen itself and don't realize that some of the nibs could be 18 karat gold. So there are some, some value in some of the parts from sometimes a, a cap or a broken pen can still get you some decent money. And digging through here, again, most of these you'll never run into. You're never going to see them. They're not around for the average person to find. You're not going to find a $5,000 fountain pen, for the most part, sitting at a flea market, a garage sale, a thrift store, or any place like that. Chances are you won't even see them at an antique mall or anything like that either these days. What we more so run into are these mid-mod century, just standardized pens that you would have been able to get for free through the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and all the way on up. They still give them out at my bank here, as do most banks. Now, there's three key reasons why a pen like this, a modern-day somewhat-looking pen like this, would be able to sell for any decent kind of money. The first one is the last name of the owner large chunk of what we sell and that's paper or anything else people buy it because a great great grandparent owned it or it's the same last name as them or they knew the owner or they worked there so many times just a specific name or owner on something can mean the difference the second big one is where it's from Many times people, local historians and collectors of their hometown or, or someplace that they fondly love are anything with that town's name or state's name or anything like that on it. So there'll be a large chunk of people that will buy it because it's from their town, their hometown or for historical society or something like that. The last biggest reason why these sorts of pens would be valuable is because of what it's advertising. A Coca-Cola pen from the 30s or 40s or a pencil. Same thing goes for pens or pencils is, you know, an advertisement for a soda shop. Um, Pepsi, Cola, uh, Coca-Cola, 7-Up, uh, Sprite, Dr. Pepper, any of those. The rarer the brand, the weirder the brand probably the more valuable it usually is. Alcohol-related ones, tobacco, all of those sorts of advertisements go very well. Farming equipment like this one that we sold right here is another example. And we sell the farming equipment ones fairly often. Co-ops seem to do extremely well. This one here is one we sold for 30 bucks. Nothing special about it. This was purchased in a lot of a bunch of pens. At the most, I usually spend a dollar or less. I think this one, maybe I have a quarter or less into it at purchase day. Usually it takes maybe one or two pens, sometimes three or four, to pay for hundreds of them when we buy them in a big bulk lot. 
So if once you sell the first couple of them and get your money back, you're free and clear. The rest of it's pretty much just profit. Here's yet another example, another one we sold. This one sold for about 30 bucks shipped. And that's about the average price I get for any of these advertising ones. Now, this is a mechanical pencil. Doesn't really matter. There's a cap on the back that comes off and you can put an eraser in there. It does not matter if it's a pen, if it works or not. If it's a pencil and it has no lead, it doesn't matter at all. These are strictly advertising pieces. And as you see, they sell fairly regularly. This again, we sold it for 30 bucks. Here's yet another one that we sold. Again, 30 buck range with shipping. We've got a quarter, 50 cents a dollar at the very, very most into it. I never spend more than that unless it's say a floater pen or anything like that. Floaters and floaty pens, those sell extremely well, so I'll spend a little bit more money on it. These sorts of things for us are basically passive income. We list them all at one time, the very same time, and then we just leave them and forget them. They may run in a sale or something at some point, but that's like a group thing. I don't ever have to really come back in here and nitpick on the listing or do much to it. Just put it up and off it goes. And here's yet another one that we sold. Again, same basic thing, co-op, Tennessee, Farmers, Dixon. It's from a different city than some of the other ones. People love the farming stuff. Most of the co-ops have multiple different family groupings that were involved in it and different last names. So there may be a wider range of people wanting something because their great-grandfather was in a co-op. And there's a bunch of people that would be interested in that because co-ops were usually a large local area, a grouping in a city or something, a county that would all get together to do things together, co-op store, things like that. So that's again why there's interest in these sorts of things. And here's yet another one, again, we sold for the 30 buck range with shipping included. All told, these make us from $1,000 a year to an extra $5,000 a year in just pens. Usually when we get a big lot of pens in, we can sell a bunch right away and get a big chunk of change back. That's profits right off the bat. Now, obviously, there's some time into listing these. You can probably list on a good day 35 to, say, 37 of these in an hour, and that would include your photo time if you're not playing around and you're just going straight at it. That would be about the average I would say you would list with these. So in a couple hours, you can have quite a bit of these up. Once they're up again, it's done. You have nothing left into it. If you have employees that list for you, in three hours, they should easily be able to do about 100 pens. With a $15 an average wage for an employee in this type of industry, it'd probably be about 45 bucks you'd have invested into listing them. So again, you may only have to sell a couple to get all of your money back and even make a profit. Usually when we list them, some sell extremely high also. So we usually make the most money off of them on the first day, two days, or three days. Maybe a week they're still selling really regularly. And then after that, they slowly die off. You will sell them throughout the time of having them on though just has to have the right person on there at any given time. Now you're not going to make a fortune or retire on selling pens, but an extra $5,000 a year, even an extra $1,000 a year is pretty darn good money for doing nothing more than buying a few dollar or less items and taking a few minutes to list them and put them up for sale. If you get five items like this, pens, marbles, or whatever else you may run into, and you're selling $1,000 to $5,000 worth of them a year, your sales go up immensely. If you're selling 10 different items, 20 different items, what you do is you take these sorts of items and you build on them. You figure out other categories and venues tied to them. A large number of these sorts of antiques and collectibles sell for the very same reason. A pen with a certain name on it will sell as easily as a trade card, advertising mirror, a sign, or anything else like that. The name itself is the key. It's not necessarily the item we're talking about. So if you understand what's valuable in certain areas like farming in general, most anything you find with those key terms, keywords, key manufacturers, or key companies can be valuable for the very same reason. So once you know some categories in collectibles, you can easily expand out and learn far more and be doing tons more money by selling multiple different items, but basically 
for the same reason. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Thank you.